The largest collections of the works of Grant Wood and Marvin Cohen are here in the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. Both men lived in this community and their art was inspired by this region, so it is particularly appropriate that the major portion of their art be displayed here. KGAN-TV and its predecessor, WMT-TV, produced half-hour programs on these two artists, both of whom were born in 1891. The Grant Wood program was broadcast in 1976 on the 85th anniversary of his birth, and the Marvin Cohn program in 1991 on the 100th anniversary of his birth. Channel 2 is proud to have presented the programs of these two artists, whose work comprises such an important part of the artistic heritage of Cedar Rapids, of Iowa, and the Midwest. He was born on a farm near Anamosa, Iowa in 1891. He lived in Cedar Rapids most of his life. His work was mainly concerned with eastern Iowa, the places, the people, the land. This is a portrait he painted of himself. An art expert has estimated that on today's international market, one of his major paintings would sell for a quarter of a million dollars. Eastern Iowa is Grant Wood country. His roots were here, and here is where he found his subject matter. The cornfields, the old barns and frame houses and windmills, the big-shouldered farm horses, the tough-minded farm people of the Depression years. He found a unique spirit in his native Iowa. Some say he romanticized it. Others say he immortalized it. Much of Grant Wood's work remains here in Eastern Iowa. It is our purpose to take a close-up look at the rich heritage he left us. In the fall, in Iowa, corn stalks are plowed under. The sight is familiar to all of us. This is the way Grant Wood saw it, in a preliminary sketch for one of his major paintings. This is the finished version, fall plowing, now at the John Deere office in Moline. Romantic? Idealized? Maybe. Grant Wood said this about imagination. In most of our studies, we deal only with material things or in ideas that are materialistic. Then someday, when we are physically comfortable, we remember dimly a distant land we used to visit in our youth. We try to go again, but we cannot find the way. After the fall, after the winter, comes the renewal of spring. Great rolling Iowa fields dominating a farmer and his horses, sketching a design in the earth around them. Spring Plowing, 1932. Young corn growing in an eastern Iowa field in the spring of 1975. Young corn, as seen by Grant Wood in 1931. The painting, now at the Cedar Rapids Art Center, commemorates the work of a teacher. Think of young sprouts of corn, like young sprouts bent over their school books, nurtured and cradled by Iowa's rich farm heritage. Grant Wood worked during the Depression years, Hard times were upon Iowa. Mortgage payments went unmet. Farmers took up guns to defend their land against foreclosure. The times are not reflected in Grant Wood's tranquil landscapes. Perhaps what he painted was a promise. Early in his career, Grant Wood went to Paris, France to study the masters and do some painting. This work is from that period in his life. Later on, he said this about his European experiences and some of the artists he met there. They believed an artist had to wait for inspiration very quietly, and they did most of their waiting at the Café du Dôme or the Rotunde with Brandy. 
It was then that I realized that all the really good ideas I'd ever had came to me while I was milking a cow. So I went back to Iowa. In many ways, Grant Wood was just plain folks, an artist in big overalls. Here are some of those good ideas he had. Home in Iowa. So, to my great joy, I discovered that in the very commonplace, in my native surroundings, were decorative adventures and that my only difficulty had been in taking them too much for granted. This is the Turner Mortuary in Cedar Rapids, as it looks today. Grant Wood did many of his major paintings here, in a coach house studio donated by his patron, David Turner. This is Iowa Steel and Iron in Cedar Rapids. Back in Grant Wood's day, it was the Cherry Company. Stone City, fall 1975. Located about 25 miles northeast of Cedar Rapids in the valley of the Wapsipinicon, Stone City was at one time a prosperous quarry town. The industry failed with the introduction of Portland cement. Grant Wood established an art colony and school there. It lasted two years. More importantly to us, he painted it 45 years ago. This is his preliminary color sketch. This is the finished painting, Stone City, Grant Wood's first major landscape, and perhaps his best known. In an essay titled Revolt Against the City, Grant Wood said this. The talented youths who, in the expensive era of unlimited prosperity, were carried away on waves of enthusiasm for projects of various sorts, 
wanted nothing so much as to get away from the old things of home. Now, when it all collapses, come back solidly to the good earth. But those of us who have never deserted our own regions for long find them not so much havens of refuge as continuing friendly, homely environments. Stone City at the Joslin Art Museum, Omaha. This is Grant Wood's studio at number five Turner Alley in Cedar Rapids, as it looks today. The story is told that one day he and his friend, artist Marvin Cohn, were out sketching. They were caught in the rain. When they came back, Grant Wood set his shoes aside to dry, and then he painted them. And here are some of the other things he saw around him in the Iowa scene that he sketched and painted. Central and dominant in our Midwestern scene is the farmer. The Depression, with its farm strikes and the heroic attempts of government to find solutions for agrarian difficulties, has emphasized for us all the fact that the farmer is basic in the economics of the country, and further, that he is a human being. Grant Wood treated the farmer in two different ways in mural paintings. These are some of the preliminary designs he did for the corn room at the Montrose Hotel in Cedar Rapids. The finished murals, completed in 1932, are now hanging in the lobby of the Coe College Library. The murals are titled, The Fruits of Iowa. We can imagine Iowans of the 30s dining at the Montrose, watched over by the farm people who supplied all that good food. When tillage begins, the other arts follow. Farmers, therefore, are the founders of human civilization. That quote from a speech by Daniel Webster was Grant Wood's subject in a series of murals he designed for the Iowa State University Library in 1934. Note the meticulous attention to detail. Grant Wood used many sources in his search for authenticity. At one time he said, 
At present, my most useful reference book, and one that is authentic, is a Sears Roebuck catalog. Grantwood designed murals for Iowa State University. He became an associate professor of fine arts at the University of Iowa. He received an honorary degree from the University of Wisconsin, and he couldn't resist poking a little fun at the academic life. It is 24 feet high, 20 feet wide. The central figure is 16 feet tall. There are more than 8,000 individual pieces of glass. Grantwood stained glass window at Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Cedar Rapids, begun in March 1927, completed in March 1929. The model for the central figure was his sister, Nan. Working in overalls atop a scaffold, he made a full-size working drawing of the window in a recreation room at the Quaker Oats plant, while the workers played shuffleboard below him during their lunch hour. Later, he went to Munich to supervise the making of the glass, doing much of the work himself when he found the German craftsmen couldn't get the Midwest American faces right. Techniques Grant Wood developed during the creation of this window and the artwork he saw while in Munich led directly to the painting that made him famous. American Gothic, 1930. The models were Grant Wood's sister, Nan, and his dentist, Dr. B. H. McKeevy. The painting was instantly successful when it was exhibited in Chicago, and it was instantly controversial. Is it a visual pun? A caricature? Is it a social satire on Midwest provincialism? Is it a realistic portrayal of Iowa rugged individualism? Any northern town old enough to have some buildings dating back to the Civil War is liable to have a house or a church in the American Gothic style. I simply invented some American Gothic people to stand in front of a house of this type. Grant Wood, tongue-in-cheek, left the interpretation to others 
and he got on with his painting. Although he did react to some criticism by rural Iowans like this. The people in American Gothic are not farmers, but are small town, as the shirt on the man indicates. They are American, however, and it is unfair to localize them in Iowa. American Gothic at the Art Institute of Chicago. We can imagine that Grant Wood had a lot of fun painting it. And he must have had fun with Daughters of Revolution, a biting comment on smugness. This is a preliminary sketch. The finished painting hangs in the Cincinnati Art Museum. Grant Wood immortalized his Aunt Matilda in Victorian Survival as a stiff-necked woman from a passing era who ignores that precursor of the electronic age, the telephone. The farmer's reactions must be toward weather, tools, beasts, and plants to a far greater extent than those of city dwellers, and toward other human beings far less. Far Meet City in Appraisal. 1931. And in the city, workman meets machine. Early in his career, Grant Wood was commissioned by the Cherry Company of Cedar Rapids to do these paintings for a display at an industrial convention. As you see, the people were more important to him than the machinery. John B. Turner, Pioneer. This famous portrait of his grandfather is one of the works in the Grand Wood Collection, recently given to the Cedar Rapids Art Association by John B. Turner II. Grant Wood's affectionate portrait of his mother. Woman with plants. It has been called Grant Wood's Mona Lisa. When Grant Wood began his career early in the century, Americans looked to Europe and to the great cities for art and for subject matter worthy of an artist's attention. Grant Wood helped change all that. He turned America's eyes toward the Midwest, the quiet, idyllic beauty of Iowa's countryside, the rugged character in the faces of Iowa farmers and townspeople. His great creative surge came during the agonies of the Depression. During those times, he showed us how to laugh at ourselves. We share his delight in letting the air out of pomposity. And he showed us another thing, the rich, ever-renewing promise of this Iowa land of ours.
The works we've showed you during this program are mostly those in places near enough so that you can go and see them. When you do, we think you'll find that Grant Wood is an Iowa man you would like to have known. Grant Wood died on February 12, 1942. This painting in the Davenport Municipal Art Gallery is dated 1942. It is titled, Last Sketch. <laughs> 